The In It Together with Lori Lynn Green talk show is a positive way to start your day. Ready for some encouragement? Yeah, let's do it. I'm pumped. Let's let the healing begin. Come be inspired. Hear moving stories. Even laugh out loud. <laughs> Can't make heads or tails of what I'm saying. <laughs> it's just incomprehensible. <laughs> Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. You'll hear real people doing real things to make a real impact. You are heroes every day. Hear honest, compassionate, engaging issues you care about. You see people come together to do good in our community. And the more we come together, the more good we can do. Listen in and get started on redesigning your life. And hear what's positive in Greater Manchester. Here's your happy host, Lori Lynn Green. Good morning, friends in Greater Manchester. Welcome to In It Together. We are so glad that you've tuned in. If you'd like to find us on the web, you can go to inittogether.net. Listen live or for previous shows, even link to our Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and LinkedIn. And if you like and follow us, you'll see we are bringing out the best in people to influence positive change in this community and beyond. Today is Personal Safety Day with Master Trainer of Defensive Strategies, Bob Bullard, and we'll be talking about, uh, based on a recent shooting where a woman was killed in town, we're going to be talking a little bit about the gangs in Manchester this morning, and those of you who are listening via live stream or uh, radio, you can either comment or give us some of your insights on the live feed or on live stream, or you can give us a call at 603-384-3535. We'll be back right after this brief message. Stay tuned. Little Leapers and Knowledge Keepers Child Care and Preschool offers learning experiences that give kids a healthy sense of self and meaningful connections to the world around them. We teach children from a positive perspective so they learn healthy conflict resolution and develop character. Owner Jennifer Lever has over 28 years experience in child development. She's helped children learn to read as young as 18 months. Join our happy place where we make happy happen. Located in Pennardville, bordering Bedford and Manchester. Call today at 603-491-1780. Hi, I'm Lori Lynn Green, Advancement Strategist and owner of AlphaAdvancementStrategies.com. I've been very successful at helping people overcome stressful situations to get immediate results in their personal and professional lives. At Alpha Advancement Strategies, we provide a non-judgmental and supportive environment, empowering clients to focus more on reaching their goals. You can find us on the web at AlphaAdvancementStrategies.com or call us at 603-860-9260. Alpha Advancement Strategies is where you invest in yourself. Hi, I'm Jen Lieber, anchor of the Recovery Now segments. Join me Tuesdays at 9 a.m. where I offer support to families struggling with addiction. Hear personal stories, learn the signs of addiction, and get help for your loved ones. Only on In It Together with Lori Lynn Green. Welcome back to In It Together, kicking off personal safety. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. How are you? I'm wonderful. And yourself? Oh, just ducky. You are because you're here, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your favorite place to be on Thursday yeah. mornings. I, I, well, yeah. I, you know, other than this, I could be, like, sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we don't want to compete with that, do we? Yeah. <laughs> um, so this morning, the topic that you brought up, obviously, Bob... Um, Bob's a, a natural protector. Obviously, this is why he has a company called Defensive Strategies. Not offensive strategies, but defensive strategies, right. which is um, why somebody's calling before I even start. Well, you can I just wait on for a minute there. Um, but defensive strategies is really all about personal protection, home defense, mm -hmm. um, teaching people um, how to protect themselves. Not to go to Manchester clubs. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because, you know, <laughs> this is the yep. thing. When we think about being situationally aware, it's also about where we're going to be. Right. You know, what you surround yourself with. And, and so we saw this recent shooting, a very, very sad. Tanya Hall uh, was yep. was just gunned down in the center of our city. Mm -hmm. And we don't see this a lot. So the reason I'm, you know, we're bringing this up is because we don't see it a lot, there are many of us who are oblivious to the fact that there uh. are gangs here. 
Mm-hmm. And so today we want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so. we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, this guy, Justin, that... that I think it was Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, the boyfriend, you mean? Jeremy's the boyfriend, yeah. Justin is the guy that, okay. that actually uh, shot her. Right. Uh, at least that's what the police are saying now. Uh, Justin Mora. I, I've yep. talked to people who believe otherwise, but <laughs> it says the police have got to go with the evidence, you know? Sure. And But, I mean, this woman is dead for such a stupid, stupid reason. I mean... Right. This is grade school stuff that, you know, the reason why she is dead is because, you know, it it started with a bump in in the nightclub. And, you know, most adults, when they when they bump into somebody, they say sorry. And, you know, everybody excuse me or pardon me. Exactly. And that didn't happen. And it just escalated from there. And it's (laughs) it's just a stupid reason. Well, and, well it, you know, when you're talking, uh, you know, males and testosterone and, and egos, it, that's, you know, just not a good. And then you add guns into the mix. It's just not a good situation. Yeah. And and, and when we think about, um, remember, we're hearing the story. I don't know how they're proving it, but they're going based off of one person's story or maybe I don't know. Yeah, the only I, one that yeah. knows about the incident as far as the bumping of the two people that were there. So right. as far as I know. And whatever witnesses that were there. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. And yeah. the attorney general is not, you know, uh, forthwith of coming with information because it's an active investigation. So. Sure. Fair enough. Um, but, but the you know, we're bringing this up. Obviously, this is kind of close to home being here. This was a single mother with a young child. Yep. Um, there's been a lot of back and forth that we're only going to talk about, not because we're promoting either side especially, but because... Mm-hmm. We're just yeah. talking about what has been going on. Obviously, there was yeah. some interviews with Jeremy Winslow. Um, there was a story that he supposedly was going to be going to Barbados in several months mm-hmm. to marry her. We, they were only going out for only like nine months or something like that. Yeah. Um, and she had a young child. Apparently, he went to go uh, see the child at the grandmother's house, and, uh, and she got a restraining order. Yeah, on him, that which was... Which is interesting. I don't really... And again, I don't have an opinion. We're going to find out it, once it's, everything it's comes out. It's very odd because, you know, judges don't grant restraining orders f- just because, they you know, someone wants to see a child or something like that. Right. There's there's obviously, again, uh, part of the backstory that we're not hearing. Okay. Well, there are... Uh, there's a lot... Just... Yeah, well, some of the backstory was that, you know, Jeremy had a record. Um, I don't really know what the case of that is. Yeah. Um, some people were saying, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you know, he's on camera. It's almost like he's inviting the camera. He's. They've said, they have said he's narcissistic if you look at his page. The other guy, oh, yeah. though, yeah. Um, they said that, that Justin Mora, uh, on the other hand, was yeah. a family guy. And so it's interesting to me how that would... Well, uh, kind of. Even on the other hand, I I've heard that Justin is is really not a family guy. He's a deadbeat dad. That uh, mm-hmm. you know, he is a father. Yeah. Justin or Jeremy? Okay, Justin. Okay. Uh, so you know, like I said, you know, we're dealing with with two uh, adult children, uh, basically. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It's just it's just not a good mix, and you know, a beautiful woman, a professional woman, is dead because of it. And, and this is really just, a mean, lot of why you do the job you do. Oh, yeah. I mean, these people just need to grow up a little bit. You know, they're, all of these people are 34 years old, mm-hmm. including including Tanya, who is who is now yeah. deceased. OK, uh, at 34, you're not a kid anymore. Grow up. Right. You know, if someone bumps you in the, in the nightclub. Then, you know, hey, say, I'm sorry. You know, that's that's how it goes. Yeah. Grow up. And you don't you don't need to take it outside and then end up shooting somebody because they leave in. Well, you know? and this is a lot of why you do your training to <laughs> wow. explain to people, you know, the person with that firearm, obvi- you know, I can't imagine took training because if they had taken training with you, they would understand that you never go after someone. Now, they're yeah. saying they're saying now there's a lot up in the air. We don't really know what yeah. happened uh, in that incident. There was talk yeah. about, you know, why is there stuff on the driver's side when they were supposed to be on the passenger side? There's mm-hmm. all kinds of. Yeah. speculation so we're not uh, we can't tell you we don't know we don't yeah. know what the investigation is showing us right um but you know i'll tell you i will tell you this that uh the attorney general office arrested justin okay and they don't and they charged him with second degree murder so they they did that because they feel that they can they can get a conviction out of it okay so the evidence has got to be pointing there okay mm-hmm. 
And no matter what happened in that club, no matter what happened after what Jeremy did to provoke the situation, okay, that guy who shot her is going to jail no matter what, okay? I don't care if he was trying to run this guy over or back over him. or, or It doesn't matter. Unless Tanya was driving, he has no justification here. Okay, right. he has to prove that he killed her be- and was justified to do it, mm-hmm. and she's an innocent bystander. She is okay, so th- there's. It doesn't matter what happened in mm-hmm. the club. It doesn't matter what happened outside the club. The point is that an innocent person died. Justin's going to jail. Period. That's right. That's now, what. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, and this is where, like, so. you you wouldn't you're you always say that you know a, f- a firearm is a tool of last resort. Yep. And if it, the best the best confrontation is the one you don't have, so you try to avoid it. You of never course. look for trouble, right? Right. And so I can understand your passion about this this morning yeah. because it was a very uh, it, it didn't have to happen. No, that's it, it really did. The bottom line. Yeah. So now that we're talking about this, um, there's there was a little talk. You kind of said you wanted to talk a little bit about the games yeah. in well, Manchester. Uh, Jeremy Winslow, who was the boyfriend of uh, a supposed boyfriend okay because i mean if you could look have just at been this, a date i don't know well we to me know. that's what it looks like because if you go to her you go to her facebook page you go to jeremy's facebook page there's no pictures of them together yeah okay and they were thinking of getting married mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm not buying this okay all right something is very weird about this yep. okay but while jeremy was in the club he he told the media that uh he bumped into a guy with a bro hat on okay I don't know what the heck "bro" stands for, but well, I I thought it was uh, uh, part of the gang, a gang or something, but I don't know. Well, I I did a lot of research mm-hmm. on uh, the bro gang. Okay, I found two actual g- gangs. I don't know if they're separate or actually okay. Uh, one is "bro" stands for uh, bikers, bike riders organization. Okay, motorcycle club. All right, and. Uh, from their website, it seems like a very, very obscure, small group, okay? Uh, there's really not a lot of information about them out there. And then there's another Brothers MC, okay, uh, which seems a little bit larger, but they don't they don't seem to flash the, you know, the bro colors, okay? They have, you know... Uh, actual seals and stuff sure. like that that's all, bro is all i mean brothers is all spelt out so so i'm not really sure what type of uh gang affiliation there was or if this is just one of those you know trendy things with you know the bro hat uh so uh you know i mean the gang the gang unit from the manchester pd is involved so they obviously think there's some type of you know gang relation here but um you know, and we do in Manchester. I mean, we have a we have a gang unit because we have a gang problem. Okay, we do have Bloods, we do have Crips, we do have, you know, a lot of these Latin uh, gangs, right? Including, uh, you know, MS13 in Manchester. Okay, a lot of people okay. don't realize this. It, let's let's talk right. about this a minute. Well, um, yeah, I mean, and that just the numbers we have to think about. Okay. Now, MS-13 is that that gang that we've been talking it is a about of one of the reasons violent Latin they, American gang. Yes, one of the reasons that they want to close the border down in yep. southern border of America. Um, MS-13 has been growing in in leaps and bounds over the you know past ten years, mm-hmm. and uh, this is a violent, violent gang. Okay, um, so and you know just having people like that here in Manchester. Mm-hmm. Okay, and Manchester is really not a big city. Okay, so the clubs in Manchester become very dangerous when you go out to them. Right. Okay, any club. Okay, because Manchester really doesn't have a lot of clubs. Manchester is a city of you know 100, 120,000 people, and when you put gang members like that in the mix, why would you go and hang around where these people are going er- at night? Yeah, it doesn't really make. You well, know? either either somebody is well, you can either be oblivious, afraid, or right. looking for trouble. I don't know. Yeah, but there's other ways so. to have fun. I, I imagine. Oh yeah, uh, there are it's nice just it's a high risk. You know, it's high risk. Now there are, are there's are, you know, and not that I want to you know mark any particular nightclub or whatever, but are, are there yeah. some that are uh, safer than others to go to, or what would you say? 
Well, you know, clubs like uh, Nance Vegas, you know, which used to be what the Dancing Beers or something like that a long time ago. I don't really know. I never, I never hung out there, so <laughs> you know that though. So, yeah. so uh, you know, that's probably one of the bigger ones. And there's there's clubs that keep popping up, going out of business, coming back into business. Okay, right. uh, the city shut Under down. Under a different name. Yeah, the city oh. shut down a couple of them because of you know stabbings and everything else. Okay. Yeah, you know that last. No, this is the past year we saw some of this stuff yeah. tussling right. out. Now were those closed down? Uh, well, you can't really close down a club. You can, you know, revoke their liquor license, that kind of stuff. You know? Which really closes down the <laughs> exactly. club. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the kids can't. They behave. have their ways. The kids, know. the kids can't <laughs> behave because they ate too much candy, and then they can't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, think I get it. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to you know shut down a business because of you know. Uh, acts of the patrons but there's you know they have other ways to do it so so what kind of a, uh, awareness can you bring to the community regarding the gangs where they might be how to protect your your family members or your well, children you know they're uh, the gangs are going to be hanging out where they can sell drugs and, and cause trouble okay so uh, obviously nightclubs okay nightclubs you know uh, alcohol you want to buy drugs okay that's that's where they are all right uh, inner city, you know, downtown where people are buying these kind of products and that kind of stuff. So it's just, you know, knowing where these people hang out and trying to avoid them. Okay. So, so uh, it doesn't it come down to though where, you know, there's one, one thing is, yes, we want to avoid certain parts, but how about let, like, what are we doing to clean up these parts rather than, I well, think this is important too, because this know, is our city. Are we going to let them take over and everybody's yeah, just going to avoid it yeah. or what are we going to do? Uh, that's another thing, right? Yeah, we're we're getting into the politics here, and you know, with with the mayor that we have right now, she's she's doing absolutely nothing. Okay. Okay. Uh, Manchester. We can be honest, Bob. Right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Okay. We, we need to talk. We need Manchester to talk about what needs is, to happen. It uh, has a major, major drug problem. Okay, and they refuse to um, accept it. Okay, and do anything about it. Okay. Firefighters in Manchester are working overtime because they're the ones dealing with all these people. Mm -hmm. Okay, with so well, firefighters and paramedics, and okay, they're the ones who are dealing with these people. First responders, basically, right. yeah. Okay, um, so until yeah, we I get a handle on, mm -hmm. you know, and of course, drugs bring in gangs. Okay, because th yeah. this is where they make their money. You know that prostitution and everything else. So, so, do you think there's been any any things that have been happening uh, nationally that have helped, like um, with stopping some of this this drug stuff coming up here? I mean, we've seen a lot of drug seizures in yeah, well, you know, uh, recent months. Yeah, when you talk in the drug seizures that uh, in, you know in the thousands of kilos, and uh, that really helps. Okay, because I mean, yeah, they have been dro uh, stopping some really big shipments lately. Which is good. Well, it is okay. good, and it's important because, yeah. you know, it works its way up from the border and whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, that's why, uh, you know, whether you know wherever you stand, I'm, you know, Bob and I are very yeah. clearly, we stand for border control. I mean, to me, it's, it's oh, rocket science. Yeah. I mean, I put a fence up in my yeah. yard. What's that? It's, it's dogs walking on the sidewalk control I have, I have doors and I have doors and locks in my house <laughs> for a reason, all right, because I want to keep the riffraff right. out. Same yeah. thing. So when we talk about... <laughs> common sense it's just like uh bugs are coming in the in the house shut the door right it, it's not really rocket science there no nope. um so for some it is though well no <laughs> i don't think it is i think it's a you know you and i both know that's more tactic than it is oh uh, yeah. yeah that's that's it's never yeah. the real cause the real problem honestly well, i believe uh, that whole border thing is really not about um uh, not about um what people think it is it's it's about people are making a lot of money with drug running trafficking things like that down there yep and uh, that's yep. i'm sure somebody's getting a kick human back. human tra tra yeah. trafficking too so. right sex trafficking human yeah. trafficking yep. right and there that is different i actually have a woman coming on friday to yep. talk about that thing she remember she donna plord she came on with oh, yeah. us yep. one time so we're, yeah, we're she's been on a couple times yeah yep. we're going to touch on that again um so at this point um we got to take a short break here any minute right. but um so yeah, we'll get a little bit more into some of these gangs when we come back. So everybody stay tuned. We'll be back right after this. Mark Major knows that great coaches need constant training to be effective. As a certified coach, teacher, and speaker with the John Maxwell team, Mark can help you identify and activate your personal and professional goals. 
If you seek to do more and be more, look up Mark on the web at johnmaxwellgroup.com slash M-A-R-C major or call 603-674-6818. Mark Major, growing leaders and adding value. Hi, this is Lori Lynn Green, Advancement Strategist and Coach Trainer at AlphaAdvancementStrategies.com. Join me Mondays at 9 a.m. where I'll talk about ways to help keep you moving forward in life. Only on In It Together with Lori Lynn Green. Morgan Self Storage has been serving Manchester and Salem, New Hampshire for over 15 years. Facilities are heated with security and video surveillance in well-lit hallways, easy access loading, and high-capacity elevators. With many sized units, portable trailers, and boxes for moving, we can meet your residential or business storage needs. 400 Bedford Street in Manchester or 8 Willow Street in Salem. Visit morganstorage.com or call us at 603-623-2000. Morgan Self Storage, making self storage secure, safe, and easy. Welcome back to In It Together. In the midst of personal safety, Yo. talking a little bit about uh, Manchester gangs uh, here, yeah. just being, make, bringing some awareness of what is out there. I think there's so many people who just kind of live and don't realize, and all of a sudden this innocent woman gets shot, and now we're like, what happened? How can that happen in our little city? Remember a couple years ago, there was a woman in the North End. My who, little city's growing up. <laughs> well, I hope it's not growing up that way. Well, but but remember a couple years ago there was a woman who was who was running in the city. She was running and then just was gunned down in the front of somebody's yard. She oh was, yeah, she was a jogger or something. Yeah, she worked at uh, the Union Leader. Yes, for many years. That was her. I still haven't found her killer. Well, and again, that's still it, that's still an open case. This is speculation, but there's a good chance that that might be connected as well. Well, you know, there are some gangs that in order to do your initiation, you do have to kill somebody. Well, that's what I was. I thought okay. that. And that's so you, for you to say yes. it, it just confirms what I was thinking. Right. So and, you know, if you go to the National Gang Threat Assessment uh, website, uh, you can see that the list of gangs in New Hampshire. OK, all of the following gangs are documented as having a presence in New Hampshire, right? Okay, I have the do I have the right uh, site right here, don't I? Yeah. Okay, so which where would I find? Yeah. Uh, wow, there's a lot of stuff here. Okay, I'll let yeah, you. There is. I'll let you. All right, so we got the Bay State, the, the Bay State Skinheads. Okay, Bl- the Bloods, uh, Brothers of the White Warriors, right? The Chinese Mafia, Combatants, the Crips, I can't Diamond, write all this. Diamond Kings. Uh, Dominions, uh, folk, uh, gangster disciplines, Hell's Angels, Iron Eagles. All right, Iron Eagles is actually another common common one. Uh, the the Juggalos, whatever the heck. Okay, uh, chaotic kings of destruction, Latin g- gangster disciplines, uh, Latin kings, Milford and Company. Okay, which is a local gang. Uh, Mountain Men in uh, Motorcycle Club, MS-13, The Outlaws, uh, The Pagans, Red Villain, Red Villain Gangsters, uh, Rough Riders, Sorin, Sorin, Sor, I can't even say this one, I don't even, Sorios, and the Tritanios. All right, so we have quite a few different uh, gangs that are represented here in, I, in New Hampshire in mm-hmm. You know, obviously Manchester being the largest city in in New Hampshire, uh, we probably got a good portion of them right here in right. Manchester. So there are some nasty people here in New Hampshire. Well, I, so you know, we have I'm to look, understand. That. I'm looking at this, okay, and they have records here going back. Well, for the first page, it's like up to two fifteen. Yeah. So this is not something new. Did you see the dude with seventy four felonies? <laughs> I, I don't know this. Well, what I want to say is this is not new. OK, as I'm looking back, because the, I don't want to go into the second oh, page, no. but this the first page, you know, uh, the first post here is July 10th, 2015. Let me just read some of the titles of these things mm. so that you can understand that this is here in our city. OK, yep. folks, at man faces felony in gang related Manchester gunshot incident. Now, Na- uh, national police search for a suspect wanted in connection with a shooting. Uh, Haverhill police. 
um, receive an ungodly amount of money fighting gangs. Okay, well, I don't know if all this is Manchester, but here's one. Escape gang member with history of violence rearrested in Manchester. This was May 2016. Yep. Um, authorities, 105 incidents requiring police responses in Manchester Club in six months, April 2017. Mm -hmm. um, Manchester police say they're cracking down on gangs, August 18th, 2017. Then we have uh, six gang members charged with narcotics and firearms offenses, one for murder, September 2017. Uh, it goes on and on like this. Uh, police unit hopes to reduce gang influence in Manchester in January 2018. So now we're getting closer. And it says a new initiative in Manchester was aimed at preventing the presence of gangs from escalating to a crisis. Manchester police said they have identified and have members of the Bloods, Crips, Latin Kings, and Gangster Disciples in the city, January 2018. Yeah. Um, there's an, uh, another one here where they're talking about the council approving crime fighting a grant, uh, grant after a change in strategy regarding uh, fighting violence in neighborhoods. Blah, blah, blah. We got yeah. all these. But but we're getting the, the gist of it here. Here's one on October 1st, 2018. Manchester gang leader faces 33 additional indictments. Yep. So once they catch it. Another one. An another c accused gang leader faces uh, felony indictments, 77 of them, on drug, gun, murder, yeah. so yeah. solicitation, and other charges in Hillsborough County. Yeah, there was there was one guy in there. Uh, one of the articles that you mentioned was a guy who plotted a murder, okay, about mm -hmm. uh, against the guy who turned him in for his drug running, mm -hmm. okay, and because he talked to the police, the guy plotted to murder him, right? Okay, he's going to be yeah, obviously going to be in jail for quite a long time, but. Uh, these guys don't care. I just want to let okay. everybody know that I have full security here. <laughs> um, surveillance and everything. No kidding. No lie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah. So uh, we, we don't know all the ins and outs of it. We're just we're just talking about what, we're, what we've learned, right. what we're seeing as posted in um, National Gang Center for this state, mm -hmm. for this city. Yeah. And, you know. Even you know, being a gang member, most of the time these guys are gonna they're gonna fly colors, but a lot of times they don't because they don't want to be they don't want attention brought to them. Okay, yeah. especially when they're selling drugs and stuff like that. It, it this they is blend not. In. I mean, even though you know, we have these gangs here, this is not L.A. Okay, L.A. They don't care. They they will sell drugs with f full colors and everything else. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be a little more discreet here in in Manchester. So. Uh, you might come up against a, a a gang member and not even know it, okay? And you know, even in little situations like you know this thing that happened at the nightclub, okay? Right. This can escalate and turn into a six-month ordeal for you or a year-long ordeal because these gangs, you know, they don't give up. Right. You know, they so just so. <laughs> when we talk about okay, so just talking about personal safety here. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's a very tragic, tragic uh, incident that happened uh, to Tanya Hall uh, being shot in the back after leaving a nightclub here yep. this week. And so as far as personal safety goes, um, you know, you train people, uh, you know, not just women. You train men and women. You do train yep. women exclusively uh, for those who have been victims of domestic violence, yep. et cetera. And... What are some of the things that you teach in your classes as far as advice mm -hmm. for someone who, who just knows nothing about it, who just, you know, this would wake them up? What yeah. would you tell them as far as being safe, how to protect themselves, how to think about or be aware well, of what they're doing? Well, you know, doing? I, I tried to look at this case and tried to apply uh, some of the training to it, mm -hmm. okay? And in this case... There's not a heck of a lot Tanya could have done, okay, right. other than making some smarter choices about the people she dates. Uh, yeah. You know, other than that, there's really, she didn't do anything wrong. Right. You know, she she thought she was going to a club to, you know, celebrate a promotion that she got. 
and it turned bad because of the guy she was involved with, mm -hmm. okay? Because he's he's a little boy inside and can't say sorry when he bumps into somebody. Mm -hmm. She's dead because of a stupid reason like that. And mm -hmm. uh, other than making better decisions about who she associates with, okay? And again, most of this training is about prevention, okay? Understanding that everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that all our actions has an opposite and positive or negative reaction, right. okay? So everything we do matters, okay? Mm -hmm. From the time we wake up in the morning till the time we go to bed, okay? Uh, every decision that we make could be the last one, okay? Obviously, her dating this guy was the last one. Unfortunate okay? now this child and, has no mother. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you saw a picture of her son. He's a, he's a beautiful boy. Yeah. You know? Uh, so other than... That kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, even my wife. I mean, when when we first started dating, I'm sure she had a background check done on me. <laughs> she's just that. She's just she's, like that. I always said I liked her. She's very wise woman. Yeah. So <laughs> because uh, at first, at first, you, you know, you age, don't you don't come off as nice as you are you know? uh, at first. You you kind of scary. But but you know, I've heard the same <laughs> thing about me. I'm a little scary at first too. So <laughs> okay. So you know. Uh, you, you gotta, you know, be. Uh, yeah, you 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 really do have to make start. So, Bob, from what I'm hearing from you, when we're talking about personal safety, and this is yep. serious, where Bob and I really want to help people stay safe yep. and not get into this kind of situation. Um, the first thing is obviously be aware of who you're really with. Okay, yeah. Yeah. you know where can someone get a background check? I mean, check. I mean, t these yeah. days you can look at people's pages and i mean you can well yeah find out a lot I mean, about you look people. at people's facebook pages and all that and it it's is not really it, it is going to tell you something okay you if really they're narcissistic to, you really have to read between <laughs> the lines yeah if you, you know if, if he's you know into bodybuilding and he's got pictures of muscles every other <laughs> picture and stuff or if he's got you know if he's showing gang colors and stuff like that so your Facebook page is going to show some things, but you got to remember that Facebook pages are basically mostly fake. Mine's okay? all real, I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> well, me too. My husband does I really, bake cookies. I really don't care what I post on it. But. Yeah, my husband does bake cookies and we <laughs> and, have a puppy. And I'm, I'm yeah. yelled at many times because of it. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to stop yelling at you, but really. <laughs> oh, it's not just you. It's my wife. And, you know, well, you shouldn't you, post that. You know, you've surrounded yourself <laughs> with sensible people, Bob. Yes. Well, that's that's part of it, it too. But it keeps it keeps us that's it keeps right. us in the right, and yeah. you're not in, you, you you are correctable like I am, yeah. and we all should be. Yeah. You know, so we're doing it's, something. You know, it's just making good choices. Okay. Mm -hmm. Understanding how to read, you know, uh, how to prevent crime before it happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's most of what this training is okay uh, yes we yeah. do teach you to react to a violent situation in in their training but we'd much rather pr have you prevent it before it even happens or remove yourself from the situation right okay? in, in this instance though you you and i know that you you i yeah. know you bob you've played this out in your mind of what could yep. have been different how and she is completely Tanya is completely innocent yep. because she doesn't know what happened she didn't know what happened in the bathroom right or any, she, right. she had no and ability to. Be had she known, I'm aware. sure she would have dialed up Uber and got the heck out of there. But maybe, uh, maybe. that might have been a that might have been a good mm -hmm. option for her because right. she would be alive today. So it, I don't know. It, it's such a tragedy that you know something like this happened for such a stupid reason. And clearly, Bob, you know I can see you're passionate about this, especially uh, when somebody is innocent and and was the it was a result of somebody's bad behavior and yep. I, I can see how that uh, stirs something up in you yep. um, so now um, you have there are some things though that you offer I don't know when's the last time you did a refuse to be a victim class uh, it's been a while now uh, because uh, you know it, it's really not I mean it's a four-hour seminar oh okay uh, it's not a high it's not a high paying class I mean we only charge forty dollars for it but there's a lot of people do, doing them now yeah. And for some reason, uh, people, it, it's hard to fill that class. All right. You know, it's because people. It, oh, I know this <laughs> stuff. I, I know what to do. I don't I don't need this. And well, that's you know, exactly the attitude that's we That's why get, I kind of know? feel like maybe maybe going forward, Bob, maybe we can yeah. go through that on here. 
because mm-hmm. I think th- there's a lot of common sense that's not too common. And a lot of people would go, yeah, I've thought that, but I'd actually don't implement it. Right. I know a lot of people, you could talk to them and go, oh, yeah, I know. I- I've had people tell me that all the time. Oh, I know. Well, you know, but you're not acting on what you know. Right. You're not really using what you know. Yeah, it's so, just like it's just like the gun safety rules. There's, you know, we we teach them the gun safety rules, and now and then we tell them that uh, if you don't listen to the and don't follow these rules, it's carelessness. Okay, it's not ignorance anymore. Okay? Right. Right. But a lot of people, it's just sheer in- ignorance because they don't know what they don't know. <laughs> well, there's yeah. some of that too, and this All is right. why I want to clear that. So I was hoping maybe going forward. Maybe we can, you know, let's start from step one. We'll, maybe we'll go through a series of st- step one, mm-hmm. you know, in each one of those things. I think yeah. it would be great uh, because I feel like even though you and I have been doing this for a couple of years, it, you know, it's been a long time since we talked about some of those yeah. things. There's so much people are oblivious to or, like you yeah. said, they know it, but they don't implement it. So get to a place of let's bring some reasons why they really want to unfortunately T- tanya hall is a really big reason uh for that oh yeah yeah uh, it's just it you know, you know there's not much you, you look can at, do. right you look at that one isn't wow how could i have prevented that one it it's didn't just, have to happen right. well the way the way you could have prevented it you i think you actually give some great advice is know who you're with yep. and don't be in places that that puts you makes you vulnerable Right, um, you just don't know. Uh, any any Manchester nightclub or bar is a a high risk area. Um, it it's is. just the way it is. And okay. so, just just before we close, though, um, what do you think that you know maybe authorities or town officials uh, can do to ch- to help make that better? You think it's really about the drugs or? Or as we've seen, somebody in here who had 77 indictments, how about not yep. letting letting them run around? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, putting those people in jail and not letting them out, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, maybe a better police presence, okay? We mm-hmm. don't have enough cops in Manchester. We really don't. Right. At any given time, there's probably a maximum of 12, pe- 12 cops on the, on, on the streets. Okay. Right. So, so, Bob, why don't you, um, I appreciate your, your topic today. I appreciate you're passionate about this. Um, give some contact information. I know you got some classes right. coming up. Um, so yep. where can people You can find go? us at defensivestrategies.org or give me a call directly at 603-566-1727. Have a good week. All right. Thank you, Bob. And uh, tomorrow you can join us. We have special guests from uh, Real Life Giving coming to talk about human trafficking. So you don't want to miss that. Have yourself a blessed day. And remember, we're in it together. Mm.